two-dimensional signal processing extends many of the same ideas that are used in one-dimensional signal processing. So in this video, we're going to introduce notation for two-dimensional signals, introduce the idea of two-dimensional filters, define something called the point spread function, which is very similar to the impulse response in one dimension, and then introduce the idea of two-dimensional convolution. So two-dimensional signals can be thought of as images. We define a two-dimensional signal, x of square bracket m comma n, as a collection of values at different indices m and n. So m describes the position with respect to the rows, and n describes the position with respect to the columns. So the value that is circled in red here is a value at x of 2 comma 5, because that's the second row and the fifth column. Now these individual values are called pixels or picture elements. We obtain this sort of signal, which is discrete in both spatial dimensions, with a digital camera, for example, which samples light in space to obtain the signal. A color image requires three values at each pixel, because you have to specify the red, the green, and the blue, and by putting those together, you obtain the precise color that's associated with this pixel. In contrast, a monochrome or a black and white image at each pixel has the intensity, and this particular image, which was generated as a JPEG file, the intensity takes values between 0 and 255 because there's 8 bits allowed to describe the intensities. We can apply filters to images just like we can apply filters to time signals. FIR filter in one dimension computes the output as a weighted sum of different values of the input. So for example, we might have y of n to be the average of the three most recent values of the input. 1 third x of n plus 1 third x of n minus 1 plus 1 third x of n minus 2. We can do the same sort of thing with a 2D FIR filter, although this time we're going to have two indices, m and n, but we can write the output y as a weighted combination of different values of the input image. So in this case, the weights are all one half. We're summing up these four pixels with the weight one half to define our output image. In general, we can think of a filter as having an input image, x of m comma n, and an output image, y of m comma n. And the filtering operation, if we restrict ourselves to linear shift invariant filters, I can write y of m comma n as a sum over indices L and K of coefficients B sub L comma K times the values of the image X of M minus L comma N minus K. For example, suppose we define Y of M comma N as one half X of M plus one comma N plus one minus one half X of M minus one comma N plus one minus one half x of m plus one comma n minus one plus one half x of m minus one n minus one. In this case, the output image is a weighted combination of these four different input pixels and we can identify the coefficients in this equation, the b's, most conveniently by writing it as a matrix. So if I look at the value of B associated with minus 1 for L and minus 1 for K, that would be associated with X of M plus 1 comma N plus 1. And that value is 1 half. So we're going to put 1 half in the position corresponding to L equals minus 1 and K equals minus 1. Then we have minus 1 half in a position corresponding to L equals 1 and k equals minus 1. So that would be in this position of the matrix. And then minus 1 half as well when L is equal to minus 1 and k is equal to 1. So we'll have a 1 half minus 1 half up here. And then we have 1 half when L and k are both equal to 1. So that's this value here. And all the other values are 0. So we're going to put those zeros inside the matrix. And in general, we're not going to draw all the zeros outside the matrix. 
So in this case, we would be summing from lowercase l equal minus 1 to 1 and lowercase k equal minus 1 to 1. And when we filtering images, there's something called the point spread function that naturally arises. And this is the two-dimensional version of the impulse response. Recall that the impulse response of a one-dimensional filter is the response of the filter to an impulse input. Well, in 2D, we have the same concept. The point spread function is the output of the 2D filter in response to a point input. We can think of this as an impulse with respect to the two dimensions, m and n. So we'll define an input to be 1 when m and n are equal to 0 and 0 otherwise. So that's a single pixel that is 1 and all other pixels are 0. So this is a point input. We'll put that through our filter and compute the output and that gives us h of m comma n which is the point spread function. And this point spread function is closely related to the coefficients of the equation that we had on the previous slide relating input to output for a general filter. So consider the example we looked at just a moment ago. We had that the output at m comma n was one half the input image at m plus one, n plus one, minus one half the input image at m minus one, n plus one, minus one half the image at m plus one, n minus one, plus one half the image at m minus one, comma, n minus one. So if I apply this input of a single point that exists at m equals zero and n equals zero, and I measure my output, I conclude that my point spread function is the way I've sh shown here. And again, it's convenient to depict this as a matrix because we have these two indices, m and n. So when m is equal to minus one and n is equal to minus one, that would be when the point is on or one at x of m plus one, n plus one, and these other terms are zero, what I'm gonna get out is one half. So that's this value here. If we look at m equals zero, n equals zero, when m is equal to zero and n is equal to zero, none of these terms, these four terms, have a non-zero component because the x corresponding to each of these four terms would be zero when m is equal to zero and n is equal to zero because there's no x of m comma n here. So that value is zero and you can go through this process of putting this point in to find that your point spread function takes the form of minus one half in the upper right corner, minus one half in the lower left corner, one half in the lower right corner. And the only values where we have a non-trivial point spread function are between m equals minus one and plus one and n equals minus one and plus one. So the point spread function is completely analogous to the impulse response. It's the output of the 2D filter when you put in the 2D equivalent of an impulse. And just as in one dimension, we have two-dimensional convolution. So for a linear shift invariant filter, the output y m comma n is the convolution of the input with the point spread function. So when we were dealing with one-dimensional signals, we had the output was the convolution of the input and the impulse response. So here we've gone to the point spread function. The expression for the convolution looks very similar to that of one dimension with the addition of an extra sum because now we're dealing with two dimensions. So we're going to sum over indices L and K of the product X of L comma K times H of M minus L N minus K. That will give us the value of the output image at pixel M comma N. Now the process for manually evaluating this convolution is completely analogous to the process for manually evaluating one-dimensional convolution. We're going to write out the steps. So first, we're going to take the point spread function h of l comma k, and we're going to flip it both ways. So we're going to flip it with respect to the rows l and with respect to the columns k to get h of minus l comma minus k. Next, we're going to shift that flipped point spread function 
by m rows and n columns to get h of m minus l n minus k. So that gives us this term in the convolution. Now to evaluate the convolution, we have to multiply the flipped and shifted point spread function by the input image. So that's step three. And then we're going to sum all the values over both k and l, as indicated by these summations. In this product, x of l comma k, h of m minus l comma n minus k, and that will give us the output image at the pixel m comma n. To obtain the output image over all pixels, we're going to repeat these steps two through four for the complete range of pixel values. So in practice, this is a straightforward extension of the one-dimensional case, although it can sometimes be challenging because it's difficult to draw two-dimensional images and to display all these various terms graphically. But conceptually, it's the same process. And these sorts of filters are very useful in processing images.